In this video, I'm going to talk about the four different electron subshells. So, subshells. So, in the previous video, when I was talking about quantum numbers, I mentioned that in our second quantum number, L, there could be four possibilities. So, four subshells could occur. Or actually not occur, but four subshells exist or are possible. So when L was 0, when L was 1, when L was 2, and when L was 3. And I said, I made this table, I think, that, that's horrible, but, the zero, the, when, when L is 0, the subshell is S, when L is 1, the subshell is P, when L is 2, the subshell is D, and when L is 3, the subshell is F. So, SPDF. And well, each of them is a little different, so I have to talk about each of them separate. Let's start with the S subshell. So, I already said that they occur when L is equal to 0. That's our, quantum, our, our second quantum number. And they will only have one orientation. That is because the magnetic quantum number, the third one, is only going to be equal to zero. So the number of ways you can represent the subshell will depend on this. For the P subshell, for example, there will be three different orientations or positions that can occur because ML can be negative one, zero, and one. But in the S subshell, there's only one orientation. So this subshell is spherical in appearance. So it's spherical. And well, a sphere, you cannot really orient it. It's equal in all ways. And this is a picture of it. So, as you can see, in all three dimensions, it's going to be the same. It doesn't matter if it's the x axis, the z axis, or the y axis. It's still going to be the same because it's a sphere. And one last thing about this subshell is that the size of the sphere will increase in size as n increases. So, size of sphere increases as n increases. So, if you don't, if you didn't watch the quantum number videos, uh, video actually, n is a principal quantum number, and it represents the total energy of the orbitals pretty much. And that is the S subshell. Now let's talk about the P subshell. P subshell. And well, it will it will occur when L is equal to one. And as I mentioned before, ML will have three different things. So we will have three different orientations, and they are called P X, P Y and PZ and it looks like this so here we got our PX here is our PZ and here's our PY three different orientations so as you can see it will be following the axis so when it's on the X axis it's going to be PX when it's on the Y axis it's going to be PY and so on and that's how the orientations of these subshells work. And for the shape, you can think of it as whatever you want, but the most common ones are dumbbells. So a dumbbell shape or a bow tie. They also say it looks like a bow tie. And the region right here is what we call an angular node but I don't want to get into nodes yet so I will talk about that in the following video and that's the P subshell now the D subshell is a little more complicated but it's along the same lines so L was 2 and ML will have now 5 possibilities negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1 and 2 so there will be 5 orientations and this is how it looks like so there we go, five. And for the shape, you could say they resemble a four-leaf clover. I 
except for dz squared, which simply looks like uh, p orbital, so or dumbbell or bow tie, uh, with a ring. So it's enclosed in a ring. Enclosed in ring, actually, in a ring. So their names will be dyz, dxz, dxy, dx squared, y squared, and dzx squared. So depending on where, which which two axes they occupy, their name will come. And that is our D subshell, and well, finally, the last subshell, the F subshell. It's a little bit more complicated. L will be equal to three, and there will be more MLs. So negative. 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3, so we have 7, which means 7 different possibilities. I don't know what this is doing here. Possibilities and. Okay.